His unchanging hand. Amen. What about you? Say amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. We're so glad that you've come to church on a Wednesday, Wednesday evening. Thank you, Pastor Gary and your team for leading us this evening into the presence of God. And I hope that you come expecting something tonight from the Lord. How many of you have had a great week so far? One, two, three. Well, we're going to pray for the rest of you that you will. Amen. Anytime you can open your eyes and stand up beside your bed. <laughs> Amen. Take a few steps. It's a good day. Amen. We're so glad again that you've come to church tonight and hope you've come expecting. If you don't have a worksheet, you can raise your hand real high. And these wonderful ushers that we pay by the hour are going to make sure that you get a worksheet. And, um, and uh, their, their, their pay is out of this world. You just think about that. While they're passing out those worksheets, a couple of announcements I need to make to you is remember on May the 28th is our Rodeo Roundup Sunday. You will make sure that, or you need to make sure that you sign up uh, for a side that you are intending to bring. Uh, you can do that out in the main lobby. Uh, we, you, you'll need to bring your own lawn chairs. Uh, if you have a tent or a canopy, not a tent like camping, because we're not going to stay here all night. I know sometimes it feels like it, right? Um, we're not going to stay all night, but if you, uh, we don't know what the weather will be that day. So if you have a canopy that you would like to bring to get under, if, the, if it's sun shining, we're going to try to uh, be out under the trees down here at the end of our lot uh, with the music and the other things that are happening. But you might want to bring a canopy if you can, lawn chairs, and you need to bring your ice with drinks, ice with drinks, drinks. that you will remember what happened tomorrow. No other drinks other than that. <laughs> Sprite, Coke, Kool-Aid. Boy, y'all are in no good mood tonight, are you? <laughs> bring your own drinks. The church is going to supply, supply all the meat, uh, so you'll make sure to bring those things. Uh, also, on Sunday morning uh, of the Rodeo Roundup, uh, we're going to have a lot of things. And I just hope that you can have fun. Amen. I hope that you're going to be able to have fun. We're going to have several surprises Sunday morning that is going to blow your mind. Uh, but if you are a person that you wear your feelings on your shoulders or you're, you get mad very easily or you are easily offended, you might just want to watch by way of live stream that day. <laughs> That way, if it goes not going like you like it, you can just turn it off. Uh, but we're not going to offend anybody, anything like that. We're just going to have fun. And so I hope that you can come and have fun on that day. That morning, we, our cafe will be open. So I hope that you will come uh, ready to, for coffee and dessert or, or uh, breakfast foods and things that morning. Um, we have um, had to order a lot of things I'm not used to construction in Arkansas. I'm used to construction in Texas. In construction in Texas, whatever you need, you go to the business you intend to buy it from, and you get to buy it all right then and there and drive off with it. In Arkansas, you have to order it. Everybody says seven to ten days, sir. I'm sorry, seven to ten days. So we have had to order several things that we're going to be waiting seven to ten days. So everything may not be in place on that morning, uh, but uh, the, the most part of it will be, and we are excited about that and hope that you'll come and be a part of that. Then this coming Sunday night, I'm preaching in Russellville at the high school, uh, the arts center there at the high school in Russellville, uh, the River Valley outpouring. We're taking a bus that holds 55. There's quite a few that have decided to go by way of their own vehicle. Uh, that service starts at 6 on this coming Sunday night, and uh, the bus will be leaving at... Good night. <laughs> the bus, when are we leaving? No later than 4 o'clock. No and we have uh, six seats left on the bus. There's six seats left on that bus. So if you want to go on the bus, you need to call tomorrow and make sure that you're, that you're signed up and ready to go. We will have a regular scheduled service here in the sanctuary uh, that night. So we're not canceling service. Amen? Amen? John chapter 16. If you have a Bible, that's where we'll go tonight. And uh, we'll be there in just a few minutes. Um, but you can keep your finger there. John chapter 16, verse 5. Tonight in Not a Fan, we're going to continue our study. And chapter 6 is where we're going to be tonight 
and not a fan. And so uh, we're going to continue studying. And tonight we're going to be talking about uh, self-empowerment or self, or I'm sorry, or spirit-filled. Self-empowerment or spirit-filled. Now, when I read that title or that sentence or just those few words, I've already made up my mind what I'm going to be. Self-empowered or spirit-filled. And um, so tonight, let's talk about this. And uh, you'll catch me in John chapter 16 here in just, in just a minute. Self-empowered or spirit-filled. A lot of us look at the Holy Spirit as part of the Trinity that we really don't know how to respond to him or even what to do with him. A lot of churches today is the latter. They simply don't know what to do with him. And some don't even know that he's a part of the Trinity. Now, if you're new here or if you're watching us by way of live stream and you are trying to figure out or maybe you've never heard in what do we believe, we believe in God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We believe in God being a triune being. God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Man is built up. I, you remember several months back I talked to you about the fact that man is built up of a triune being. We talked about that. And so tonight, many people don't know what to do with the Holy Spirit. They don't know, they don't know if something starts to break out in their church or something starts to happen. They don't know what to do. And, and uh, so we'll talk about a little bit of that tonight. The Spirit of God. God is the present part of God that desires to be with you and in you. I'm not sure if that's on your worksheet there or not, but it'd be good to write it down. The Spirit of God is the present part of God that desires to be with you and in you. The Holy Spirit desires to be with you and the Holy Spirit desires to work within you. Say amen. Amen. And so tonight, our position on the Holy Spirit, and I'm not going to get way far into this tonight, but our position is of two works, salvation and bad baptism. Yeah. This, that you receive the Holy Spirit when you are there, and the evidence of that is by you speaking in other tongues. Amen. That if you've received the Holy Spirit, there is going to be a fruit. There is going to be evidence. And uh, we'll talk about that tonight as well. On page 88, the writer of the book you've been reading, I hope, said, the truth is you cannot be a follower unless you're filled with the Spirit. Fans who try to follow Jesus without this power will start to show signs sooner or later. Sooner or later, they will reach a point where they are frustrated by their failures uh, you keep doing, he said, you keep doing what you don't want to do and you don't do the things you really want to do. Come on, it is the Holy Spirit. It's not your conscience. It is the Holy Spirit. It is that voice on the inside of you that will say to you, you better not do that. Or, or you probably ought to not be a part of that. Or, or uh, you probably ought to not say that. You, 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 that's the Holy Spirit at work on the inside of you. When we try to follow Jesus without being filled daily with the Spirit, we find ourselves frustrated by our fail failures and exhausted by our efforts. You need more of the Holy Spirit right now than you needed this morning. You need more of the Holy Ghost right now than you did this time yesterday and tomorrow at this time. You'll need him more tomorrow at this time than you need him right now. The Bible says to be ye filled with the Holy Spirit and that we're to act continually on a daily basis. But some figure it to be an experience that happens at an old-fashioned altar. I spoke in tongues when I was 10 and that's enough. No, listen, with the devils we face today, you need to speak in tongues every day. Come on, and some all day. Is it, this is the Pentecostal church, right? I'm not sure. Don't answer me, but did you speak in tongues today? You're here, so don't think he's talking about the Sunday morning crowd. I am talking about them, but because they're not here, we know. I'm talking to us tonight. Have we prayed today? Have we been with God today? Well, I'm waiting till I get home, Pastor. I'll take my bath, drink my tea, and before I get ready to bed. No, you won't, because you'll take your bath, drink your tea, and the news comes on. 
You'll take your bath, drink your tea, sit down in your recliner, and your nap comes on. When you wait for him to be last of the day. So you need more of the Holy Spirit right now. And we should be on a daily basis at Lord, fill me afresh and anew today. Give me something new today that you did not give me yesterday. Fans try to play the role of the Holy Spirit. But trying to be God has a tendency to wear you out and it will leave you tired and frustrated. John chapter 16, verse five through 16, let me read it to you. The Bible said, but now I go away to him who sent me and none of you asked me, where are you going? But because I've said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you but cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own authority but whatever he hears he will speak and he will tell you of things to come. He will, verse 14, he will glorify me for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will make, he will take of mine and declare it to you a little while and you will not see me. And again, a little while and you will see me because I go to the father. We're going to break that down here in just a few minutes. The question tonight in diagnosing being a fan or a follower, the question tonight is, is are you self-empowered? Are you a self-empowered fan or are you a spirit-filled follower? Are you a self-empowered fan? If you are a self-empowered fan, you will receive only from Jesus what you want. You have, listen, tonight and in most services here in our sanctuary, you will have as much of God as you want. Come on, the ball game starts not going well. What do you see most fans do? Up and right out of the out of the stadium. Come on, if it's not going their way, they don't like how it's being coached. They don't like the way the thing's going. They show their refusal by getting up and leaving. Most fans in the church show their refusal by not even showing up. Most fans... Most self-empowered fans, if you go to the ball game and you don't like the food, you don't like this, you don't like that, then you just quit going to that stadium. If, if we decide that we don't like that team, if we're a self-empowered, then we just swap teams. We, we, we root for somebody else. But listen, as a spirit-filled follower, I'm go, I want to be where the Holy Ghost is. Come on. I said, as a spirit-filled follower, I want my family in a Holy Ghost-filled, on-fire church. Come on. I don't want them in a dead, dry church somewhere where they're begging for the Holy Spirit to come. I want to... Listen, we can sit here and we're raising a generation of millennials and we're raising a generation of people that if we do not leave something behind, they will never experience what you have had the privilege of experiencing. And listen, mom and dad, it's up to you to cultivate that, not only in the sanctuary, but in the place of your home. Say amen. One of the problems is today with the kids we have today, they don't know what church is like because the only church they get is the hour they sit on the pew. There's no church at home. I'm preaching good. We don't pray with them at home. We don't talk about Bible at home. We don't discipline them at home. We don't do any of that at home. And the only church our kids get today and the only church millennials get today is the hour that they sit on a pew. And the whole hour they're sitting there, they're being told there's a champion on the inside of you. Well, there is a champion on the inside of you, but there's a whole lot more on the inside of you. (laughs) So are you a self-employed fan? 
or are, or are we spirit-filled followers? There is a vast difference. For the disciples, this defining moment came when Jesus ascended into heaven, leaving them here to carry out his mission. Follow me or you're going to miss the rest of this tonight. For the disciples, the defining moment, the defining answer for them or this question that I just asked you came when Jesus ascended into heaven, leaving them here to carry out his mission. He said, I must go that the comforter must come. I must go away that the teacher must, I have to go. What would we do tonight without the Holy Ghost? Come on, if, if they came tonight, and there's even a percentage in this church that this wouldn't affect, they're sitting here right now. But if they came tonight, knocked on the door and said, Pastor, we're taking the Holy Ghost away, then my, re my response would be, you better take me with you because there's nothing else left. And the rest that sat here wouldn't even know the Holy Ghost was gone for six months. Come on. We need you, I can't stress, this is what I'm gonna, pre I'm preaching uh, this River Valley Outpour and I sat up in my bed Tuesday morning at 317 preaching what I'm gonna preach down there. I, I have been, listen, I'm, I'm hardly really nervous a lot. I get nervous when I come up here because I'm not speaking for me, I'm speaking for him. But I have had nothing to preach at this conference I'm gonna preach at Sunday night. And for a preacher, that'll scare you to death, won't it, Brother Brinkle? Scare the soup out of you knowing that you're going to preach like that. And I sat straight up in my bed Sunday, uh, Tuesday morning at 317. <laughs> I was going to tell you what I'm preaching on, but I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> and, but preaching about the Holy Ghost. Come on, if he was gone right now. So for the disciples, the defining moment was when Jesus ascended into heaven. And they were there now by themselves. Listen to me. If they were only fans of Jesus, one of two things would happen. They would go back to their old lives and resume their former careers. Or they would try to carry out this mission God gave them because they would depend on their strength and their efforts. It would end in utter and complete failure and Jesus would disappear into human history had he not sent the Holy Ghost to be with you and I. Had he just gone away and ascended into heaven and left me and you to fend for ourselves without sending the Holy Ghost. Come on, how would we know? How, how would we know? How would they know? He left the Holy Ghost. He left the teacher. The Bible calls him a teacher to teach you and I the word of God and the meaning of the word of God. He, he left the Holy Ghost to be a comforter to you and I when there's time of distress and there's difficult days along the way. Come on, he sent the Holy Ghost as a protector. Come on. That, how many times, and you cannot you cannot answer this. Has God protected you from disaster? I don't know. That's the right answer. I don't know. Because of the Holy Ghost. How many times did you just stay a little longer at the stop sign? And whew, somebody blew the stop sign. And you thought, wow. Come on, that's the Holy Ghost. How, how, how many of you would have nearly signed on the dotted line on something you shouldn't have signed on? How many of you would have done something but the Holy Ghost? And then you're like, wow, boy, I sure had a good idea. No, you didn't have a good idea. That's the Holy Ghost he left behind in order to protect you, in order to protect me. I'm going to preach on Sunday, Sunday night. It ain't over till it's over. I sat up in my bed the other morning preaching. It ain't over till it's over. Preaching about Lazarus. I was preaching about Lazarus. They said he's dead. Jesus said, no, it ain't over till it's over till God says it's over. It ain't over till I said, and I preached sitting there right there in the bed and Joni slept right through the whole thing just like some of y'all do through almost the night. <laughs> but I got notes. I was writing. Acts chapter one, verse four through nine. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. 
Not W-E-I-G-H-T, W-A-I-T. The word you and I hate most. Most folks are good at praying for 10 minutes. You can get 10 minutes out of folks. Come to prayer meeting, boy, the first 10 minutes, it's like, I think we're going to blow the lid off this whole joint. 15 minutes? (laughs) 10 minutes, you can get a good altar service for 10 minutes. But then after about 10 minutes, it kind of starts to dry up. Because we are at our waiting point. And could it be that some churches have dried up in their waiting point and some relationships have dried up in their waiting, waiting point because we don't like to wait. We want it, Lord, send it now. Send it, Lord, oh, Lord, send the power just now, right now, right now. We don't want to wait till 7.30. You got two minutes, God. You got two minutes, and if you can't get it done in two minutes, I'm going to check it to you. And so the Lord said there in Acts Chapter 1, verse 4 through 9, to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me, verse 5, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Verse 6, therefore, when they had come together, notice that's the second time you've seen that, is together. What can happen, Brother Eversaw, when we get together? Come on, I'd rather have church out on my deer stand. I'd rather have church in Dillard's. I can have church on my tractor mowing my yard. Well, you can have church all out there, but just think when believers get together and faith mixes with faith, come on, and gifts mix with gifts, come on, gifts mix with gifts, and the gift of faith begins to arise. Somebody can get healed. Somebody can get delivered. Somebody can get set free. Come on, somebody can get saved. My Lord, come on. Power can fall. Where's the power? I preached on it the other day and the power went out in the church. Was y'all here? Preached on where is the power? I was wailing away on that platform on a Sunday night and the electricity went out. Where's the power? Where's the power in today's modern day church? We just heard at district council just two weeks ago of the power falling, and I can't tell you, I can't tell you where because of the man that, that gave the testimonies a very, very um, a hidden place in this world. He can't, can't tell where it's at, but he told us of the miracles, the modern day miracles that are taking place today. That are happening right, that are happening right now. You know why? I wish they could, I wish they could have been there. Wish you could have been there. You want to know why? It's because of desperation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's it. It's desperate. We're desperate. not desperate. Desperation. We don't. You know what you think desperate is? Pouring a bowl of cereal and having about that much milk left in the jug. <laughs> My God, your whole world just falls <laughs> slam apart. Just come to pieces. Make a jug of sweet tea and there's only about that much sugar left in the can. That's desperation. That's desperation to us. But you don't know about having your eyes gouged out. What he said? You don't know about having your eyes put out. You don't know about the story he told of just a week before his coming to where we were at of a lady giving her life. Listen, he, his story was, listen to this, where he is a missionary at in the, this part of the world. They, they have seen one per. He said, we see an average of one soul come to Jesus every five to six years. This is all documented. This isn't tomfoolery he's doing. One soul comes to Jesus every five to six years. You would fire me within two years. You'd fire me and look for somebody else because he can't get it done. Their last convert they had saved, their family were complete non-believers at all. And when they found out he got saved, their son, the family brought him to a meal. 
Am I telling this right? They brought him to a meal. The entire family are all there. All Jesus haters. Atheist is not even a strong enough word. All Jesus haters and this son. And they're, that day, they're all hugging on him. We're so glad you've come to eat. They all sat down to eat. And after he finished his meal, the dad stands up at the end of the table and says, Son, here's what we've done. We just poisoned you. And you have two days to live. And you have two days to renounce Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. And if you'll sit at this table right now and you'll renounce him, I'll put you in the car and we'll take you to the hospital where they can pump your stomach and maybe you'll live. But if you don't, you're going to die. That's what they said? The boy picked up the phone. The boy picked up the phone, sitting there at the table, his cell phone. They're just now starting to get cell phones where he's at. Picked up the phone and called the group that led him to Jesus and said, tell me congratulations. And the guy, the missionary that was telling us was the one he called. He said, tell you, called his name, said, tell you congratulations for what? He said, come on, tell me congratulations. The guy's happy. He said, tell me congratulations. He, and, and the missionary said, what do you want me to congratulate you for? He said, because man, in less, than, in less than two days, I'm getting to go see the king that you just took me to. He said, in two days, I get to go see the king that you just took me to. And he said, what's wrong? He told him the story. And in two days, he was dead. You. And I don't know desperation. That is isn't within this past month. What we want to know is, and I get it all the time. How long are you going to be tonight? I get it nearly every service. Some are joking. Some are joking, but not joking. When are you going to be done? And this boy just called and said, tell me, congratulations. And then we wonder why God doesn't heal cancer in America. We wonder why we have so many problems we do in this country. We wonder why we face, because we're not desperate enough. And the bottom line is, you've heard me say it, we simply just don't care. We put God on a time clock. We put God on a calendar. We put God in a box. We stuff the pastor in there with him and the leadership of the church. And if you can't get it done in this little time frame, baby, you just lost me. And then we wonder why we have so many dead babies and the highest divorce rate and the, all the things we have going on in this world today. It is because we don't care. Verse 7, and he said to them, it is not for you to know the times of the seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. Now when he has spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up and a cloud received him right out of their sight. You shall receive power. That power is not a plug into the wall. That power is not a magic incantation. That power is not a pill. That power is not a shock. That power is from on high. It's stick to power. It's the power that when the devil comes and the enemy wants to huff and puff and blow your house down and he comes to steal, kill, and destroy, you can look the devil in the whites of the eye and say, if God be for me, who can be against me but 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 we have too many politicians to do our fighting we have too many paid folks to do our fighting that's what the preacher does he prays for me boy let I wish we could have that guy there's no way we can do it I wish we could have that guy come and sit and just talk it was one of the most gut wrenching I walked out there, I don't know if it's him, I looked at her, Pastor Cody, and I said, I'm going back to my church. I'm resigning tomorrow. I'm resigning tomorrow. Because if that is what this is, 
whew, I'm in trouble. And I understand not everybody's called to missionary places like that. Only people like that can go. But here, here's what I do know. As the pastor of this house, as the leader of this house, it's part of my job description, part of my requirement to get this church into the spirit of God. Don't look at him. I don't even know what he's doing. You see what I'm saying? It's my job. It's our job to stir up the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's our job to stir up the... Come on, it's our job. I love Sister Barkley to death. I don't even know if she's here tonight. I love Sister Barkley to death. And I want the Lord to continue to use her in the gifts of the Spirit. But she's not the only one that God can use in the gifts of the Spirit. You all have the ability to do exactly what she does when she gives a message of tongues and interpretation of tongues and Sister Eva and others. But it's up for me to say, God, fan into flame that gift on the inside of me. I got to fan it into flame at 4 o'clock in the morning. I got to fan it into flame at 6 o'clock in the morning. I got to fan it into flame when I don't feel like fanning it into flame. Come on. It's up to the end of, man, preachers can preach. Listen, I can preach till my head pops off and not move anybody. But just think, what if this Sunday we all showed up here? Come on, you forgot about the little sugar in the cup, and you forgot about the little milk jug, and you forgot, but we forgot about all the little things that are going to happen, certainly happen between right now and Sunday morning. We just walk through the door looking for a miracle to take place. We just walk first, look through the door to see somebody get up out of a wheelchair, and we just came through the door. Don't care what he sings. As long as it's uplifting to Jesus, I don't care. I just get me in the presence of God, Pastor Gary, because I understand that in a five second space, Bam, in the presence of God, he can do more than I can preach up in five hours. But what will happen Sunday morning? It's what happens all the time. Boy, what if you went to church? What if you, what if you sit down at your family's table this week thinking, what's in this cup? What's in the, on this plate? We don't have any concerns like that. Another story that he told us, one of their other converts in five to six years, he's been over there, how would you say, 20-something years, so how many converts does he have in five to six? One of the other converts that he has, and what they're doing is they're taking those converts and they send them out into different places. And today they have over 5,700 cell groups within a few of these countries where they are undercover believers operating right in front of everybody. Some of you don't even believe that, do you? One of their other believers, they found out she was a believer and they took her in front of her family with a machete. And they first cut off her foot and told her to renounce your God. She wouldn't do it. She, they got all the family right there. They lay her arm out, cut her arm off with a machete, and she would not renounce. Laid her other arm out and cut her. This is all within the past month. Oh, but if he don't sing the song I like, I'm going to swap churches. If they don't elect the pastor I like, we're going to split and go start another one. If they don't do the color carpet I like, we're going to. How do you think tonight the disciples must have felt when Jesus ascended to heaven? Think about it just for a minute. Put yourself there. How do you think the disciples must have felt? Whew, Jesus is gone. What an overwhelming feeling to know that the torch has been passed and Jesus is not there in the flesh to help them make or help you make the right decisions anymore. Come on. 
Jesus has been there for the, for the past several times. They've seen him do all of these things. He's made all the decisions. We're going to this town. Let's go. Okay. We're going to go eat supper. Okay. Hand me the bread. Let's turn it. Okay. Let's pray. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. Now what do we do? Who's going to tell us to eat? <laughs> Who's going to tell us it's time to go to the bathroom? Who's going to tell us when to brush our teeth? Who's going to tell us when to pay our tithes? Who's going to tell us? Who's going to tell us to tell our neighbor about Jesus? I mean, he's not here anymore. He's the one that did all that stuff. He said, I have to go in order that someone that's not going to live with you anymore, but he will live with you, but he's going to dwell on the inside of you. And just as I have talked to you, he's going to talk to you. I have to go. Because listen, him here in his human nature, come on, come here, Brother Eversall. I can only be where at one time. I'd love to be over there with you, Pastor Gary, but I'm standing by him. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to be sitting by my wife, but I'm standing here with him. Why? Because in the human nature, I can't go anywhere else. Come on, he needs me. I need him, but I can't be over there with him because I got to be right here. Are you with me? Jesus said, I have to go so that when I go, because I'm bound by this human nature, come on, I'm bound by being right here at one spot at one time, but if I go and you remain the church and the church on the inside of you, then everywhere you go, all these little churches, I'm, I'm with you, I'm in you, come on. I can be in India, I can be in Van Buren, I can be in Hot Springs, come on. I can be in Hawaii. Boy. Boy, if the Wednesday night crowd don't get that, nobody else is going to get that. So what an overwhelming feeling to know. Now it's their responsibility. Come on, when Jesus was here, we're just following him. All we got to do is follow him. He's here. All we got to do, do what he does. Go where he goes. Go. Do what he says. That's good. But now he's gone. And the torch has been passed to the disciples. Now, oh my Lord. Oh, now. It's about like some of these folks that just graduated this week are about to find out. Come on. Woo, my mother couldn't wait to hand the car payment over to me and hand the insurance payment over to me and all those kinds of things. Come on, when you laid up in bed and, 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 and in a McDonald's on Saturday morning and she was at work already since five o'clock, come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now you're gonna know what it's like. Are you see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So now there's some responsibility that's taking place right here in this section. <laughs> come on. And so was it with Jesus. He's gone. And he says, okay, now, guys, it's up to you. I'm going to send you every necessary tool. I've shown you how to do it. I tried to get you to pray with me in the garden. You couldn't even stay awake. I, try, I tried to show you. I tried. Now it's your responsibility. I have to go. I've got to send somebody but Jesus actually teaches the disciples that, it's, that it is best that he go away. John chapter 16, verse 7 through 7. The Bible says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. Wow. For if I don't go away, the helper will not come. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And, and what Jesus is saying there, it's red letter words. He said, it's to your advantage. It's the best thing for you that I go away. These kids may not see it, that, that what has just happened to them, it's tragedy. Come on, that they're going to have to. <laughs> Get a J-O-B and wash your own clothes. <laughs> Pay for your own shampoo. I bet now there won't be a gazillion different kinds on the shower. <laughs> Come on, when I get in the shower at my house, I don't know what to wash with or what not to wash with. 
I got L'Oreal, Suave, Paul Mitchell, Britt Brooks, Sam McDonald. And I got in the shower the other night and there's a Barbie doll sitting there in her little plastic car. And I thought, well, you shouldn't be here. <laughs> Never know when you get to my house. I got zest, dove, and something that if I put it on, you'd think I'd swap sides. And then there's one that says men's something. And I'm just not so sure I've never even touched it. Because <laughs> I've pulled enough tricks on people at my house. <laughs> Who now they'll be going from the craft macaroni and cheese to the ramen noodles. Ooh, a case of 36 for $2. That stuff will keep you full for two weeks. Jesus said, I got to go. You've had craft all this time, but you're going to have to learn how to survive. <laughs> no, that's not what he said. He said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage I go away. It's the best thing for you that I go away. You've told your kids that have graduated, this is going to be the best thing that ever happened to your life. First of all, it's going to be the best thing that ever happened to mine. And the next is going to be for you. But it's going to do you well to have a little responsibility. Come on, they gripe about having to come out in the backyard and pick up a few sticks and rocks, but they want to swim in your swimming pool all summer. You know how I fixed that at my house? We had a little party here a while back. We had a rock picking up party and a stick picking up party. So as, you know, your back was made to do this. And your hands were made to do this. It's not a new invention. And so we were struggling with doing those two things at the same time. For a period of time. So we just had an object lesson. And because I know their history, I said to them, do you like that thing over there? Y'all get in and swim and to have all your other friends over and y'all, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, their faces just light up. And I said, well, then if you like that thing, you better get to doing my thing because you ain't getting that thing till my thing's done. <laughs> right? You seen the new commercial with the dude, they're, they're, aver they're, they're pushing insurance and the young boy has got a flat on the side of the road and he doesn't even know what the crowbar is. Y'all seen that commercial? I don't want to talk to him. I want to talk to his daddy. <laughs> there is a distinct shift from the Old Testament to the New Testament in how God connects with us. In the Old Testament, he was with us, but in the New Testament, he gives God in, or he is God in us. Let me say it again. In the Old Testament, he was God with us, but in the New Testament, he is God in us through that of the Holy Spirit. Jesus could be with his followers, but the Holy Spirit would live in his followers. Come on, in the Old Testament, he was with them. Jesus could be with his followers, but in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit would live in his followers. Come on, I think about that tonight if you can. If you can get it, I am the carrier. Come on, you are the carrier of God the Father himself. On the inside of you, brother, ever saw me and you may be the only one. God the Father dwells on the inside of me. I don't have to run down to Walmart to get him. I don't have to go over to my house to get him. Come on, I can stand right here and call all of heaven down into this sanctuary because he left and he... You're the carrier. Think about that. God allowed you, when he filled you with the spirit, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, he allowed you to be a carrier of heaven. The greatest arsenal earth has today 
is those filled with the Holy Ghost. Boy, that was good. The greatest weapon today is being filled with the Holy Ghost. Instantly, I connect with the commander in chief. Come on, I have to call Pence. I don't have to call Comey. We can't call him no more anyhow. Don't have to call a secretary. Don't have to make a reservation. Don't have to make an appointment. All I got to do is take off. And I'm direct connection to the commander in chief. I don't have to wait till I'm mountain living. I can contact him in the middle of the valley. (laughs) I don't have to wait. I don't have to wait until payday to tell him thank you. I can tell him thank you in the middle of the struggle. Come on. I don't have to wait till I get out of the boat. I can... I can praise him in the boat. Come on. I don't have to wait till the storm's over. You're the carrier. The Holy Spirit in the Bible is equated to that of a fire. You're the, you are a carrier of fire. Now some of you look around, there's just a little. Hmm. There's just a little ember that's red. There's some that's, you know, it's burning pretty good. And then there's some that's a bonfire. But here's what I've noticed about a fire over the years. If the fire I started goes out, it's only my fault. I know where the wood is. I can do this. I know how to do it. I know how to build the fire. Come on, in the church today, we've put together every leadership meeting and conference on the planet of how to do leadership. How to use gifts, how to do this, how to this, how to this, how to that, how not to. We've done all of that. So there's no excuse in me not knowing how to build a fire. I am pumping water off our pool cover so they can get in it eventually this summer sometime. But all the rain has water collected on that pool cover and I've pumped it off a few times through the year. So what I do now that I know just about how long that pump can run on a full tank of gas, I just fill it up, let it run until it runs out of gas. Because I know how long it's going to run. And I know there's enough water on there that it'll still be pumping when it runs out of gas. Are you with me? The other day I went down, filled it up with gas. Started, it starts pumping, it's pumping water out off that pool. Several, quite a few minutes later, later on. I mean, I'm listening to it. I can hear it running. I know what it sounds like when it is pumping. And I know what it sounds like when it quits pumping. And in just a few minutes, I'm standing there in the kitchen, and it, and I immediately knew it's about to die. So now I instantly have a option. I went and bought the gas. I paid for it. I know where the can is. I put it in. I know where it's setting. I didn't hide it from myself. I know where the can is. I know where it's setting. I know how to refill that tank if I want to refill it because I hear it is about to go empty. I know what to do. And stood there in the kitchen and Bailey, as soon as it choked out, it died in just a second. She said, your pump quit. I said, yeah, I know. She said, what'd you do that for? I said, I did it on purpose. I I knew what it was doing. My point is about that. At one point in time, I had an option to drop everything I was doing and run down there and pour more gas so it can keep pumping. I'm the only one at my house that knows how to do that. 
because I've not taught the rest of them how to do it. I know how to do it. You're the only one that knows how to keep your pump pumping. And when it runs out of gas, when it runs out of gas, there's nobody to blame but yourself. You can't blame the gas station. They got plenty. You can't blame Walmart because they don't make cans because other folks make cans other than Walmart. There isn't just one place. You get the fuel. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? It's not Brother Eversol's problem that my pump ran out of gas. It's not my neighbor's fault. My pump ran out of gas. It's not even my wa- wife's fault. Are you, are you with, are you where I'm at? No one can be blamed. Acts chapter 4, verse 7 through 14. We see that the empowerment of the Holy Spirit does for Peter and John, what the Holy Spirit uh, does for Peter and John. They are brought before the high priest. Verse 7, and they, the Bible says, and when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and of the elders of Israel. Verse 13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled, and notice this, and they realized that they had been with Jesus. Boy, you missed that. Let me go back and help you. They got them all right there. They said, what? How have you done this? How have you done these miracles? How have you done these things? Are y'all with me? Are y'all there in the room? Peter and John sitting there said, by the rulers of the people of Israel and the elders of Israel, and the people look back at them and they think, these folks are stupid. I don't like that word. Peter and John, they're ignorant. Look, we would make fun of them. Do you see what they just said? Ha, 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 ha. And they realized, then they realized they had been with Jesus. Come on, you don't have enough wisdom to run your life. You don't have enough wisdom to how to stay out of temptation. You don't have enough wisdom to how to stay married for 67 years. If God the Holy Ghost didn't help you to do that, come on, when you've been with God, I said when you've been with Jesus, people can know when you've been with him and when you've been without him. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out, man, this person's a prayerful person. Well, I I want it to be, and boy, this is a statement I probably shouldn't say. I want it to be that when I walk in a room that folks know, hey, he's, he's been with God. Now, there's time to goof off and all that, but when it gets down to business, somebody needs to know that you've been with God. Are y'all listening to what I'm telling you tonight? We don't have this anymore. Our grandparents, our in-laws, our, the old folks, man, they stayed and prayed until they got through. They prayed until something happened. Now we pray until, oh, that's it. Time to go home. Are you done yet? Are you done yet? Is this over? Boy, I'll tell you, you've heard me say this before, but I believe just in my imagination, there's going to be these warehouses in heaven when we get there. I mean, just great, big, ginormous, huge, huge, massive warehouses with gifts and boxes all stuffed on the inside of them. And you're going to stand there and ask Jesus, what is that? And he's going to say to you, all the things you never asked me for. All the things you were in too big of a hurry for. And I was just about to give you that one but you gave up on me. I was just about to bless. I was just about to answer you. And you decided the preacher had preached too long. I was just about to heal your child. And you said, I got to get home, watch the Razorbacks. 
I was, see that one right there? Man, you asked for that for 10 years. And I was two seconds away. And you chose not to pay your tithes. You chose not to give back to me, so I chose not to. That one hurts, don't it? All the others were okay till we got to talk about money. I was just about to save your daughter. And you slept with your neighbor. I was just about. And y'all decided we don't like them. We go down here and start another one. Verse 14, and seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. Did you get it? And they realized they had been with Jesus. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. In other words, because they had been in the presence of God and they had waited and they had been with Jesus and a miracle took place, it shut the mouth of the world just like that. Could it be possible if the church would return to an old-fashioned Holy Ghost move and we would see, come on, we would have to stand here and pray for 17 hours for a miracle to happen. But because we have been in the presence of God instead of the presence of gossipers, we've been in the presence of God and we worship God. And when they come in, they come into the presence of the Holy Ghost where miracles just start to happen and we don't have to beg and beg. Would it not shut Van Buren's mouth just like that? But we can't. We're too worried about our portfolio, our money, and who people think we are, and what we've got, and what we've done, and who we are, and who I am, and blah, 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 blah. All the stuff we're so concerned about, Jesus has no concern any whatsoever. On the news, just before I came into a meeting a few minutes ago, I was at home watching the news, and they said the, the Dow fell today 300 points, and I sat there, and I thought, so? Didn't affect me. <laughs> now, some it may have affected. Some tonight are sitting in their chair. What am I going to do? 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 What are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? It's because they put all their eggs in one basket. And they have defined themselves and their peace by who they are and what they have instead of who they know and who's on the inside of them. Oh, there goes so-and-so. Look at him. He, you know, he's got a lot of money. He's got a whole bunch of money. If he'd just use it, he could do something phenomenal for the church. But guess what? He don't do any of that. We love to talk about stuff like that. You know, so and so they sit back there, they ain't got a they got they got man, they got all kinds of money. We love talking about stuff like that. You know what that is to Jesus? A stench in the nostrils of God. What about, what about the folks that will come through these doors on Sunday? That if God doesn't do something for them Sunday morning, they lose everything they've got. Or they walk off on their kids. Or they walk off on their marriage. Or they walk. What about, what about that? Come on. If God can save my measly, pitiful, stinking soul, then can he not fix everything else? And seeing the man who, they, who had been healed standing with them, they couldn't say anything. Boy, I wish we could remove all doubt from everybody that's driven right by this church tonight. Because they, they drive, you, you, well, maybe you do or do you don't. I invite them. We're out in the community. I invite people. Oh, I ain't coming to church. <clears throat> Why would you come to church? I don't believe in none of that. I don't believe in all that. 
Or they'll say, you know, that's, that's for you good people. <laughs> well, let me give you about five minutes to tell you who I am. Paul says, I'm almost finished for you people watching the clock. Go sit at the piano, Mike, so they'll think I'm not lying. Romans chapter 8, verse 11, the Bible says, But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give you life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. When you become a Christian, you receive from God the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's his promise to all who put their faith in him. So it's not a question of whether or not you have access to the power of the Holy Spirit. The question is, have you accessed it? The question is not tonight, do we have access? If I am saved and my name is written in the Lamb's book of life, I am entitled for everything from cover to cover of this book. Not because I'm the pastor of this church, not because my name is Britt Brooks, but because my name, I went through the shed blood of Jesus Christ for the remission of my sin, and my name is written in the Lamb's book of life, and it makes me eligible for every blessing in this book. So the question is not, am I, have I, do I have access to this? The question is, have I accessed this? Sure, man, we got, look, on, the, on this thing right here, and that thing you're holding in your hand, I can access anything in the world right here. I can stand right here at this pulpit and go to China. I can go to Taiwan. I can go to Africa. I can talk to people in Vietnam. I can, right here, standing right here. We'd have never thought that would have ever happened. For all y'all know, instead of me looking at notes, I'm watching a ball game up here. You don't have no idea. I'm not watching a ball game. We have more access today. Come on, all you got to do now is go to Google. You may be the world's worst cook. How to cook lasagna. Find Betty Crocker or Betty whoever. Her recipe is right there. And as long as you know how to You Betty Crocker. Oh, you're not. You need a haircut too, by the way. You, you have a ponytail tomorrow. For how you cut your hair, we can do it right now. You got a knife? If you can read, guess what? You can cook. It's all right there. How do I fix my marriage? It's all right there. How do I buy an airplane ticket? It's all right there. How do I quit adultery? How do I just live right? How do I just... How can I just be happy? I'm tired of being depressed. How do I how do I have a family? How do I how can I have a, a just a good whole family? It is not because you don't have access to it. It's because you have not accessed it. There's no reason today, I told my kids, I went to school more to socialize than anything else. And I'm not told them all up. All. I just, I've told them today, I told them, there's no reason for you to be a failure in school. Boy, I would have done a whole lot better. How do you do calculus? What's the answer to X crooked letters 
box, square, circle, minus airplane, minus car. What's the answer? Boom, right there. Boy, my teacher, I'd have blown Miss Watley in the, I'd have blown her away. Are y'all with me or y'all just like, I'm almost done. There's no reason to be a failure in school. There's a sign, and I don't know if it's still there. I haven't looked in a long time because they're doing a bunch of remodeling. When I was a senior in high school, they put a mural or letters. It's really letters. It's letters up on the, all the way, a huge side of the high school. Great big letters. And all it said was, it's here for the taking. They put that up on the side of the school when I was, in, when I was a senior. I had been saved. I hadn't been back in church several months. And Brother Norton preached a sermon. Because if you sit at his office and look out his office window, he's looking right at that wall. And he opened his window one day and stole my sermon. That high school said it's here for the taking. In other words, we have everything you've got, you need right here to be a success. You just got to come get it. It's up to you. You want to be a high school football star? We can help you start right here. You want to be a physicist? We can help you right here. You want to be a nurse? It's all, you, gotta, you can start right here. It's all right here. You want to be the president of the United States? Go to another school. It's not here. <laughs> be a politician? Go to Benton. <laughs> Go somewhere else. That said, it's here for the taking. We ought to put that up on the side of the church. It's here for the taking. You'll have as much education as you want and you'll have as much Jesus as you want. I have one more page of notes, but we'll finish it next week. If you're, I don't know where you are. I don't even know where we are in our worksheet. You can fold it and put it in your Bible and bring it back. When you become a Christian, you'll have as much of God as you want. And here's the last statement I'll say. Fans may have received the gift of the Holy Spirit, but they aren't being, they aren't being filled with the Holy Spirit. Fans, remember, Fans may have received the gift of the Holy Spirit, but they aren't being filled with the Holy Spirit. You know what? I don't need to read this to you. Matthew 24, 25, I, 23, I preached on it last week. And I may do that this Sunday morning, preach on the seven woes. But you know what I taught about the seven woes last Wednesday night. And then I preached to you out of Matthew 24 and 25 a few weeks ago. All of those things we're seeing happening. Storms, wars, rumors of wars, threats, persecution, fear. You name it, we got it. Today, on the news, they're ready to get rid of the new president already. Trying to figure out how they can kick him out right now. Ignorance. What you need is not an answer to all of that. Because I can tell you what the answer to all that is. And the one word that covers it all is collapse. It will all collapse. The answer for you and I today is I need discernment and more of the Holy Ghost. I need more of the Holy Ghost. Lord, let us be like the sons of Issachar to be able to discern the times of where we are. Because when you understand what time it is, I had a meeting at 630. We've been working all day in the cafe and other stuff all around here, finishing stuff up. I was filthy. I ran home to change clothes. I sat down for just a minute. I lost track of time, looked up, and it was time for me to go. Well, when I realized it was time for me to go, guess what? I didn't just keep sitting there. Because somebody's waiting on me for a meeting. I got, and I got to get to church. I realized it's time to go. I didn't just keep sitting there. 
I got up and got about my business and got done what I needed to get done so I can get back to take care of business. And that's what we've got to do now. It's time. It's time. And the answer is the Holy Ghost. Would you stand with me all over this house? Pastor Gary, I don't know what you can sing.